British Iranian diplomatic hostages freed and reunited with families in Iran slash the United Kingdom. On March 16th, British Iranian nationals Nazanin Zagarda Ratcliffe and Anushe uh, Ashuri, after years of politically motivated detention in Iran, were released. Both were arrested and detained for several years following questionable accusations of espionage and charges against Iran's security. The two have consistently denied any and all of the allegations. Iran's Revolutionary uh, Guard Corps accused Nazanin, a charity worker, of, quote, leading a foreign-linked hostile network. She was detained in Iran for nearly six years. Ashuri, a 67-year-old retired civil engineer, was arrested in August 2017 during a family visit to Iran. He was accused of spying for Israel's Mossad intelligence agency, despite living in the United Kingdom for 20 years and was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. Nazanin's husband, uh, Richard Ratcliffe, garnered media attention from his multiple lengthy hunger strikes and other high visibility protests that pressured the British government to force Iran to release his wife. They finally reunited with their families in the United Kingdom on March 17th. The Iranian government has become notorious for arresting individuals with dual citizenships like Zaghari Ratcliffe and Ashuri, accusing them of espionage and using them as political bargaining chips on the international stage in a clear pattern of so-called hostage diplomacy. To get, um, so what they were using them as a pawn for getting their debt release. The debt that was before the for for the previous regime, the Shah, the Pahlavi dynasty, the um, the Shah, the United Kingdom owed um, how much money? To so uh, I'll give Iran? the background. So before the Islamic Revolution, the United Kingdom bought a bunch of tanks from um, the the previous regime under the Shah, and then the Islamic Revolution happened, and they they never paid that money. And international courts have decided that the debt is legitimate and the U UK government should have to pay that debt. Um, but they never did for over 40 years. And um, it was around 440 million USD, I believe. Um, half a, say that again, 400, how much? I, I believe it was around 440 million USD. Okay, so around half a billion. Um, yeah, so even though we could say the you know the UK should have paid that money back, we could say that, but Iran's tactics in trying to get their debt back, it, it cannot be you cannot justify this in any way. Like just using an innocent person, accusing them of being a spy, just so you could get your money back, no matter how much you think like uh, Iran was justified to demand that money back. You cannot use innocent civilians as a as hostages like this, right? Like this is insane. This is this is worse. What? Okay, even if you want to criticize the United Kingdom uh, for not giving the money, you have to acknowledge that using innocent civilians as a pawn is so much worse, so much worse than whatever the United King you want to accuse the United Kingdom of, right? Um, that. But also we have to, so some people are saying in the live chat, hold on, Iran had its uh, debt cleared. That's why uh, Nazanin was released. Uh, yes, but both sides, are both sides are denying that. Both the UK is denying that the release had to do with the debt clearance and the Iranian government is also denying that. And both of them know that everybody knows their lie. <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, it's yeah. so stupid yeah. how often they say, oh, these are, these happened in parallel. They're just coincidence just a coincidence everybody just like when she like, was told like nazanin was told by her right. captors explicitly within three to six weeks of her detention that this is for the debt and you will not be released until the debt is paid and that promise everybody. was true everybody knows that this was because of to get the money back but there's a reason why the both sides have to lie even though they know, like they're not idiots, okay? Both sides, they're lying and they know people won't believe them, okay? And they know everybody will know what the truth is. But the reason why they're forced to lie 
is because if they don't, they are openly admitting to doing something against their own policies, right? For example, United Kingdom has a policy of not paying people who kidnap your citizens to not encourage more kidnappings, right? So if they admit that they release the debts in response to getting Nazanin released, they are openly on, on the record in violating their own rules. So they don't want to be, so if, they don't, if they don't admit it openly, technic, they, technically it would be almost impossible to hold them accountable for violating their own rules, right? Like even though they know nobody would believe them, they can't admit that openly, right? And on the Iranian side, they also have to claim that this has nothing to do with release debt because they don't want to admit that they kidnap <laughs> citizens to get money to get money from other governments. Even though we had a presidential candidate announcing that as a policy, that to, 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 like we had one person at least in the Iranian government over openly saying that yeah, that's a tactic that we could use more than one actually, right? Uh, but technically, on the books, they can't admit that this is something they do. Uh, because that would be a violation of something they claim not to do. And it's actually it's absolutely disgusting. You know, they know everybody would think that this is absolutely disgusting. Uh, but they have to claim that she's a spy, even though everybody knows that they just randomly uh, accused dual citizens of being spies just to, using, just to use them as a pawn um, against other governments. Just, guys, don't, dual citizens, don't go to Iran. Please don't go to Iran. Anybody, if you like, just if you're a dual citizen in Iran, leave, leave right now. Okay. Oh um, God! Like there's yeah. a fire under your ass. Yeah, like you're so so likely to just be used. So as an, vulnerable. So vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, it's Which not shows... even exclusively dual nationals. Like foreign, just complete foreigners. Like that Australian woman whose name I can't remember right now. She was an academic. Like you're vulnerable too. They will just yes. take you and accuse you of spying for Israel. Yeah, but also just remember what this means, right? If you're a dual citizen, for example, if you're a citizen of Canada and Iran or UK and Iran or US and Iran, the Iranian government is relying on the fact that your other citizenship means mo more to that government than your Iranian citizenship means to them, right? So they treat you as, they put you in jail, they treat you like crap, because your Iranian citizenship doesn't mean that you're going to get protection from the Iranian government. It means that you're going to be used as a tool. And they're relying on the fact that the UK government values you as a UK citizen more than they value you as an Iranian citizen. That they will do so much to get you to freedom while they're making your Iranian citizenship use it as an excuse to take away your freedom. They're like, if this does not scream how much they devalue human life even if it's their own citizen and how much they themselves know how other countries care, care more about their citizens than they do i don't know how what else could show you that right it's such a it's such a huge display of hypocrisy and lack of care for your own citizens it's, it's unbelievable i don't know if they see that i don't know if they see like oh yeah we're we're relying on the humanity of our, the better humanity of other governments to extort mm -hmm. to to get money from them but i'm really mm -hmm. um it's so ridiculous yeah um okay, let's go to <sighs> Yuval is saying these guys arrest you know, suspected Mossad agents as often as Mossad sabotages their projects. Yes, for exactly. Like for every person that they accuse of a of being a Mossad agent who are not, there's a, there's Mossad 10 has actual, three to five are, successful operations. <laughs> yeah, there are actual Mossad agents in Iran doing their thing without getting arrested, while they accuse their own citizens of being Mossad agents. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, and yeah, secularizing. I mean, you're right. I mean, that's gross, but it's right. Um, we start some comments. I want to. Oh, yeah. so Michael Rowe was saying ideas of what? Ideas on box, right? So, guys, if you want to see my interviews in Israel, uh, the channel to go check out is called Ideas on Box. Um, but yeah, so anything else you want to highlight before we leave? To go to the next question, next next story. Um, 
the one thing I wanted to talk about, well, I wanted to talk about this news in general because we have been talking about the story of Nazanin for past several months. And um, I, so we wanted to talk about kind of this happy conclusion to it. Um, I was so happy for their family. Like I watched the, so she recently did her first press conference after she was released. And just to see her husband, like he couldn't stop smiling, just like constantly holding her hand, like smiling at her. Like he just looks overjoyed. So it just made me so happy. Um, and so Gossam is raising a beer, you know, to her husband, to Richard. Um, I, one thing that I think is a little bit more difficult to talk about is saying, you know, one, it's the ethics of, is this rewarding bad behavior? Okay. If it is rewarding bad behavior, is the alternative to let an innocent civilian, you know, take the punishment so that the regime is, you know, not rewarded for unethical behavior. And then on the other hand, so I was posting about this on my Instagram and I have people in Iran who follow me on Instagram. And one person replied to my story saying, it's good that she was released, but this is going to enable the suffering of millions of people. So there's the suffering of all the people in Iran that have to be considered. There's the suffering of the people who are impacted by uh, Iran's foreign operations, such as Syria, who need to be considered. Um, now the regime has almost half a billion dollars more, you know, to, uh, to, to advance their agenda. Now, I did read that they have to transfer this money through ways that honor sanctions. So they have to transfer it to a third country and then it will be sent to Iran. And then it is earmarked specifically for humanitarian purposes. Now, how likely it is to actually get used in that way is definitely questionable. I mean, it can probably very easily be diverted elsewhere, especially considering that the IRGC controls so much of the Iranian economy. Um, but Armin, what do you think about this contention of people, you know, who are suffering under the Islamic Republic saying, you know, I'm happy for her, but what about millions of others? Yes, I mean, well, I mean, that's fair to say. Also, people are pointing out and we should have we should have mentioned there was one another person who was left behind, right? Both um there's two person. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so I was I was going to get to that in a second. Yes. Yeah, okay, so you're going to get to that. But yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, and it's clear that the, the danger of this money being used for nefarious purposes is very high. Uh, given that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, so people, uh, especially Iranians in the live chat, what I heard is that Iran was offered by UK to, give, to be given this debt back in medicine. Not money, but in medicine. Okay? I haven't heard that. Yeah, and especially I heard that from one source, so this could not might not be accurate. So somebody please confirm that. And Iran, uh, Iran's government refused that, and they were like, "You we you need medicine right now. This is something you need badly, it's because that would be the most safest way to make sure that the IRGC is not going to use the money for um, malicious activity is to not give them money. Like, how about we give you all this money instead of giving you money?" We give this all in, in, with the same value of medicine that Iran needs. And they were like, no, we need the money. Um, so that's like, why Why not? Like, aren't these the same people who constantly complain um, that, oh, your sanctions has stopped the medicine, st you know, has, these sanctions has like You're put Iranian people You're killing innocent in Iranians by depriving yeah. them medical care. No, you well, are. Yeah, well, here's, yeah, actually, like, we have had so many, pro so many shows before that, that went over why it's the Iranian government that is denying medicine to the citizens, not the sanctions, right? Um, but yeah, so so if that is if that is true, if they if they denied medicine and demanded money, makes me wonder why where the money is going to go, right? Because and also how what prior, what higher priority do you have for this money than the medicine that you constantly mention? that you're missing because of the sanctions right so there's that um but yeah so you wanted to mention some other things especially the people who were left behind so one thing that's very important to mention is that there is a third individual 
His name is Murad Tabaz, and he is a U.S. citizen, a U.K. citizen, and also an Iranian citizen. And so some people are saying that because he has a U.S. citizenship, that is complicating his release. So he was supposed to be released alongside Anushe and Nazanin, but he was not. Um, at first, it seemed like he was released from prison. And but then based on the press release, so when Nazanin did her first press conference, the, she invited the daughter of Murad to come speak and to highlight his case. And she said that within 48 hours of his release from prison, that he was then taken back. So he's back in the Veen prison. So which is just devastating, devastating for them as a family. And so they're, you know, they're concerned that the case of Murad is, is going to be forgotten about. Can we, and, let's do this, let's do this fast because I need to go very soon. So. Okay. Um, yeah, but basically I wanted to highlight the fact that it's not just Murad, right? There are other yeah. dual nationals that are still left behind and their families need the port. And one thing right, that Nazanin I'm talked about in the press conference was I was the lucky one that the media picked to get attention, right? Mm. And so it is our job as people who are interested in these things and interested in human rights to pick up the stories of these other people who are arbitrarily and illegally detained, because then mm. that will actually incentivize the media to pick up their story as well. Nazanin probably got the attention because she's a young mom separated from her kid, right? And because of, of her husband, because of her, the great yeah. work of her husband. Yeah. So that's too. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to highlight, you know, th what's happening to Murad Tabaz and the need to push more. All right, so I'm really going to go quick over these. Philip is saying, hey, Armin, is Persian a difficult language to learn? I don't know why you're asking me that. I never learned, I, you know, given that I learned that as my mother tongue, I never had to, I don't remember learning it, so I'm the worst person to ask, right? So I don't know if it's that, how hard it is. Um, Oxymoron is saying, UK has notoriously bad protect, uh, protecting its citizens, especially non-whites. Uganda, Hindu crisis is another example for that. Okay, Oxymoron, based on um, Western country standards, maybe, but relative to Iran, they're so much better. Relative to standards by countries like Iran, they are actually incredible. <laughs> okay, so yes. both are true. Yeah. Both, yeah. Um, okay, Qasem is saying, I heard there was some suggestion to pay it back with anything except money, but the Islamic Republic had never accepted accepted those offers. They need money to spend on their proxies. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well, but I know. Plus, they know can still to. push the narrative of how evil and cruel the West is by denying yes. Iranians, you know, needed oh, medical yeah. care. They wouldn't if be able give to them pull that, that propaganda marketing tactic if they're like, look, we gave you half a billion dollars in medicine. Yes, they want the narrative that we don't have medicine because of the West. So if you get medicine from the West, that would be very bad for them. Um, do you want to read the last comment before I bring up the next news? Last news. Um, Bread of Life is saying, is there a petition for his release? Not to my knowledge. Um, good idea, though. But we yeah, that is a good idea. One. I know that Amnesty International is definitely involved in help pushing for his case. Actually, we don't know. Actually, no, guys, don't willy willy nilly start a petition because sometimes petitions could hurt instead of help. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts, right? So you have to <laughs> wait for a green s signal from the people who are involved, are connected to the uh, negotiations, or like so. Yeah, so don't just willy nilly go start a petition. We don't. We wait for the experts to tell us, and we just uh, follow. No, it's their very lead. sensitive. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.